Hey guys, welcome to Wannabe Tuners, where we like to be wannabes. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and bell so you know what's going on. Hey guys, when you have a Jetta, the first thing you should do is sell it and get a different car, right? Well, no, I put a KL4 in it. And after that, you should learn and be like, okay, you know what, it's a Jetta, it's front wheel drive, you know, KL4, we're done, right? No, I'm not gonna learn that. I'm gonna save up and I'm gonna put a bigger turbo in that eventually. Why? Because I don't know better. <laughs> so basically, before you go big turbo, what you wanna do is you wanna check out the health of your engine, especially if it's high mileage. This engine has 187,000 kilometers on it, and I don't know what that equates to in miles, but it's quite a bit, especially for direct injection, new technology, we don't know, I don't know. Anyways, so basically, basically, we're gonna do a leak down test, we're gonna see what the health of this thing is before I put a gt 3071 r in it. And the funny thing is, I don't really have the money for that right now, so it might be a while, but a leak down test is fun. You know why? Because we're just hanging out, we're drinking some beer. So we're gonna jack up the car. The leak down test has to be done while the engine's hot. So we're gonna jack up the car evenly so that the oil pickup tube can actually pick up some oil because if the engine's like this and all the oil's over here, you don't want to starve the engine of oil, right? We're gonna jack it up evenly, idle the car, get it hot, and then do a leak down test. Okay, we got the lower splash shield off now. It's just a bunch of torque screws. And that gives us access to the crank pulley, which gives us access to the crank bolt, which we'll use to turn the engine over once it's fully warmed up. So let's go ahead and warm it up. Okay, so we're pretty much at operating temp. 204 Fahrenheit, yep, yeah, we're, we're there, we're good. So now we'll start the leak down test. All right, so we've just turned the engine off now. It's warmed up fully. This is our Matco um, cylinder leakage tester. And uh, for next step now is to remove all of the ignition coils and all of the spark plugs. Okay, we're gonna do this relatively quickly so that the engine doesn't cool down. First thing to do is find a proper hole. All right, now I 3D printed this off of Thingiverse. I didn't design it, but it's pretty legit. It helps you pull coil packs. But the first thing you want to do is take off the coil pack harness. Disconnect all those connectors. Oh, and when the engine's hot, it's very fun. Because it's like playing Operation, where you don't lose a game, you burn yourself severely if you touch the wrong thing. There we go. Really quick. Slide this. You can just pull them off if you want, but I just want to try this tool out. Oh, ooh, that's hot. The head is hot. Okay, guys. You're so hot-headed. Right? Did you know? Ah! Everything's hot. I need the pry bar. Oh, yeah. Here we go. So, let's take the coil packs out and we'll keep them in the same order. So, we'll just go one, two, three, even though this is actually one right here because it's next to the timing chain. One, two, three, four. Okay, there we go. Now spark plugs, we need a spark plug socket. So we're gonna take all of the oh, spark plugs out. It's pretty loose. Every single spark plug is coming out as quickly as possible because you don't want the engine to cool down because you'll get inaccurate readings. So this is the part of the procedure where you kind of want to do it quickly. Loosen them all up. Right now the engine's at operating temperature and all the internal components have expanded to size. So if it's going to make a good seal, it's when it's hot. Did you gap them before you put them in? Yeah, they're uh, 28 thou. Nice. Did we gap them? Yeah, we gapped them with the feeler gauges because they were like 32 from a uh, factory or something. All right, one more spark plug to go. NGK heat range eight, iridiums. That's what people do for bigger boost, isn't it? Higher boost, not bigger boost. So the firing order on the engine is one, three, four, two. So we're gonna start with cylinder one. Now we need to determine whether the cylinder itself is on the compression stroke, because it has to be on the compression stroke where both intake and exhaust valves are closed. So in order to determine that, we're gonna be using a small square piece of plain paper, which is very light, and I'm gonna place it over top of the spark plug hole like so. 
And then what's gonna happen is, is Julian's gonna rotate the engine over until that piece of paper gets a puff of air. Oh, there it is, I just saw a puff of air. Okay, so that means we are on the compression stroke of cylinder one. Now, using a very long screwdriver like this one here, we're going to place the screwdriver inside the spark plug hole until it just touches the top of the piston. Just like that. And as Julian rotates the engine over with that 24 millimeter bolt on the crank pulley, you're gonna see that screwdriver start to rise as the piston rises. We're gonna slowly do that until the screwdriver reaches the very top. So it's moving. Once it stops to move, we know we're at top dead center on that cylinder on the compression stroke. That's it. So now we have our hose here and we're gonna screw this hose in that came with the cylinder leakage tester into the spark plug hole. And we're just gonna go hand tight. There is a seal on the tip of it, so that should be good enough. So keep going until it's fully bottomed out. Fully bottomed out? Feels like it at least, yeah. It's not turning anymore. Perfect. All right, so we've got our uh, line from the spark plug hole to the tester hooked up. Now we're gonna hook up our compressed air to this side. Make sure the regulator is fully dialed back so there's no pressure going in as soon as I connect it. I'm gonna connect it like so, just like that. Now you can see there's two gauges here. So the one on the left is the air going in from the, uh, the compressed air, and the one on the right is how much air is actually being held inside the cylinder. So I'm gonna slowly crank it up to 90 PSI right here. Wow, 90 PSI going in. The cylinder is holding 90 PSI perfectly. So this cylinder is good. All right, now we do this again three for, more times. So this is the box for the tester kit. So if you look here, they give you an idea of how your, how your readings are. So you got 90 PSI on the left hand gauge reading, 90 PSI going in, right? And then you got the right hand gauge reading, the PSI. So 90 PSI going in and we're holding right around 89. So cylinder leakage is about 1%, which is perfect, right? It goes all the way up to 15%. So basically the higher the cylinder leakage percentage, the worse your, uh, your cylinder is doing. Yep, we're on the compression stroke now. I just saw it blow off. Okay. Let's stick our screwdriver in there and get to top dead center. Okay, go, rotate it, slowly. You'll see it plateau when the piston's completely straight, or the, the rod. There, right there. Right there? Yeah. TDC, perfect. Perfect. Let's crank the juice up. So I'm at 90 on this side. Perfect, only 1% leak down. Let's do four. Oh, already on the compression stroke, perfect. Okay, rotate the engine over. Just came down to this. Did it? Yeah. How much down? Let's see. Okay, let's do. Let's okay. try it there. It came down a little bit, let's try it there. Okay, so in our, in our logging, we've seen that cylinder four is the cylinder that likes to knock. So. Well, there, I kind of saw it all over the place, to be honest. Yeah, well, it knocked in cylinder three too, but like, uh, let's see. We'll see. Hopefully the engine hasn't cooled down too much. I think we're, in, we're not in the oh, stroke. Yeah. We're too far, we went too far. We went too far. We'll go to cylinder one first, and then we'll come back to cylinder four. I think one of the valves is open. No, cylinder two we have to go to now. Ah uh, yes, cylinder one let's, let's get let's do cylinder two and then we'll come back to four. So we'll go back to that one after we do cylinder two. Okay, go ahead, rotate the engine. There we go. We're on compression on cylinder two. Okay. Hold on. Nice and easy here. Okay, go ahead, rotate it slowly. Very slowly, watch the top of it. 
you'll see it reach the top and then when you rotate a little more it won't move. bit tricky to get these threads started, but you just gotta find the sweet spot. You wanna be gentle with your lines, you don't wanna go too crazy. Grab this, grab this. Crank up the dial, get the left gauge to 90. Perfect, 89, 1% leak down. Perfect, okay, All right. cylinder four, we'll get back to the compression stroke. So I'll have to bring the engine over a couple of times. Okay, now we're actually gonna try to get to TDC exactly on cylinder four. Okay, it moved. It can't be the, the firing stroke again though, right? Did you rotate the engine over? No, I just, this is like not even 90 degrees off of from cylinder two firing. Okay. It's just moving it because there's still air. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Right. We gotta come all the way around. Now it's the compression stroke for cylinder one. Now we're coming back towards maybe three. Now cylinder four probably. Okay, that looks like it. Okay. It blew up pretty uh, pretty intensely there. Let's get the screwdriver. We're gonna try this again. And let's not go past TDC on this one. Let's try to get it right before the engine cools down here. Okay, go nice and slow. Very slow. Let's not overshoot this time. So far, all the cylinders are good. If cylinder four is good, GT3071R, here we come. 400 at the wheels. Hang on. Like everybody else is doing. Yeah, let's stop. All right. Let's do it and let's hope for the best. Beautiful. It's perfect. Your engine's in perfect condition. Okay, 186,000 kilometers and uh, this is good news. 1% leakage on all cylinders after 185,000 kilometers. That's what happens when you change, when you change your oil every 4,000 kilometers. <clears throat> it is a good engine, I will say. All right, guys, so um, now I just need some money to throw into a bigger turbo. So um, I'll have to see, this might take a long time because I got to save up and do this build properly. Um, we'll see what happens. It may not even happen, but Either way, thanks for watching. If you like these videos, there's a little bell you can click and that'll make the turbo happen faster. No, I'm kidding, I don't wanna tease you guys. Um, but uh, yeah, if you like the videos, keep watching. We try to be informative and also be goofy at the same time. I think it's time for another beer, what do you think? I think so.